summer, I turn 11. Uncle Brendan, are you up there? Sister Claire says, now that you're in heaven, you can be my guardian angel. I'm pretty sure it was drunk driving that sent Uncle Brendan to heaven, but I didn't tell Sister Claire that part. Sister Claire says you can look down and see all, which I think about every time I go to the bathroom. I have a birthday coming up, and I've been pretty good lately. You may have noticed last Christmas I let the poor kids have the toys I didn't want anymore. Sisters say there's angels to listen to my prayer. But what's the use when you pray and pray and you know nobody's there? Now I'm not super good. I'm not super bad. I think my prayers are slipping through the cracks. The angels never hear the likes of me. Are they looking down? Do they even see? I am no Saint Anthony, and I will never be. The angels never hear the likes of me. Pop! Pop, for my birthday! Do you think I'll get a new G.I. Joe with lifelike fuzzy hair? Pop says it's nice to want things. It's nice to want things. For my birthday, I get a slinky, a Spaldine, a board game called Diplomacy. Diplomacy? You know what I think? I think we should give this crap to the poor kids. What about G.I. Joe with lifelike fuzzy hair and a beard and kung fu grip? Ma says G.I. Joe glorifies war. But on the box at Roy's Toyland, it says G.I. Joe can go on scuba missions, jungle missions. He can climb the mountains of Nepal. Pop says, if you really, really want one, if you can earn it. Earn it? That means scrubbing the toilet. Ma hands me a big fuzzy scrubbing brush. I'm scrubbing that filthy toilet good. My little sister Maggie sticks her head in. I want to help. Scrubbing the toilet is for smart people. I'm smart. Scrubbing the toilet is for big people. I'm big. No, you are not. I will always be bigger than you, and you will never be a man. Two weeks later, I got a pocket full of quarters. Roy's Toyland opens at nine. G.I. Joe waits on the shelf, lifelike fuzzy hair and a beard. So he cannot possibly be mistaken for Bobby's boyfriend, Ken. I grab that box, float up the aisle. Roy accepts my pile of quarters. I float back home. The boy who invented the world. That morning is a blur of scuba missions, jungle missions, kung fu grip. A quick break for Fluffernutters? But after Fluffernutters, I look for G.I. Joe. He's not on top of my dresser. He's not in my room. He's not upstairs. He's not downstairs. Maggie! I'm doing my chore! Where? In the bathroom! I walk down the stairs. I walk down the hall. I hear Maggie singing. He's got the whole world in his hands. I get closer. I hear the sound of scrubbing. He's got the whole world in his hands. I get to the bathroom. Maggie is clutching G.I. Joe by his legs, scrubbing that filthy toilet bowl with G.I. Joe's lifelike fuzzy hair. I guess I scream because now I'm being restrained. Ma trying to pry G.I. Joe out of my kung fu grip. Next thing I know, I'm lying on the kitchen floor watching Ma deposit my beautiful, hard-earned, shit-covered G.I. Joe into the trash can. Ma, Ma. I think this is just a nightmare. Like that time I dreamed my dead turtle rose from the grave and tried to bite off my tinkle? Maggie, I need you to know. My life was much better before you were born. Every Saturday morning, Pop used to walk me to the bakery to buy crumb buns. The day you entered this world, the crumb bun buying came to an end. Uncle Brendan, are you up there? Oh, <laughs> never mind. I open up that trash can. Take one last look. 
The lid slams shut. Ma says, Bobby, we have a surprise for you. A surprise? Your godmother is here to sit for you. You always have fun with fun cousin Mamie. Cousin Mamie is anywhere that's between 35 and 60. Fun? I thought cousin Mamie got married. Hush now, Bobby. I thought cousin Mamie sailed to Ireland. Hush now, Bobby. I saw cousin Mamie get on a ship and sail away. We waved goodbye to her. We don't talk about that. Robert, remember me? Fun Cousin Mamie. We especially don't talk about the fact that apparently ever since Cousin Mamie sailed back from Ireland, her head tilts all the way to one side. Your mommy says you lost your wee dolly. It was actually more of an action figure. Well, you are in luck. We are going to make a wee dolly. That's really not necessary. But Cousin Mamie's already sitting cross-legged on the floor, unpacking her bag. Needles, thread, scissors, scraps of cloth, stuffing, yarn. Cousin Mamie, did you happen to bring this yarn back from Ireland? Who says I've been to Ireland? Nobody. Actually, everybody. Did you get married? Who'd marry me? What happened to your neck? Never mind about my neck. My neck's always been like this. No, it has not. Why would you even say that? Let me ask you something. Do you know how to handle a bully? Do I know how to handle a bully? I'll tell you how to handle a bully. How do you handle a bully? Kick him in the hiney. In the hiney? In the hiney. Fast and hard. They never see it coming, and it can do a great deal of damage. Never forget that. I will never forget that. Between the two of us, me being 11 and Cousin Mamie with her crooked neck, it's a miracle my ragdoll looks anything remotely like a human being. Button eyes. Paint. Cousin Mamie paints my ragdoll a little smile. She paints a heart on his chest. When you see that ragdoll heart, you'll always think of Cousin Mamie, and you'll always remember the best day. The best day. What shall we call him? <laughs> Whatever. G.I. Patrick, reporting for duty. I take the ugly thing outside, and God forbid any boy in the neighborhood walks by our front yard to witness this. G.I. Patrick, Bobby's rag doll, climbing the mountains of Nepal on the front stoop. Dee -dee 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 -dee. After a while, Robert! Soda bread fresh out of the oven. I bolt up the front stoop into the kitchen, demolish a plate of warm, buttered soda bread that Cousin Mamie may have learned to bake from the family of her apparently vicious ex-husband back in Ireland, but that's pure conjecture. But when I get back outside, here comes this older boy up the block. He's carrying a long, pointy stick. He gets to our mailbox, smacks it a good one, then he stops. He spies G.I. Patrick lying in our front yard. Then he does something so strange, I still think about it. He takes that long pointy stick and he stabs G.I. Patrick right in his heart. Then he parades up the block, my rag doll at the end of a stick. You're a rat! You're a rat! Robert, what are you screaming about? An older boy stole my rag doll and stabbed him with a stick and he is a rat! He is a rat! Who was it? I think it was Jimmy Gannon. Jimmy Gannon of the thick-headed Amadon Gannons up the block? It's well known around the neighborhood. Don't mess with Jimmy Gannon. Robert, are you sure? Yes. Now Cousin Mamie is strutting up the block. Apparently she's going to mess with Jimmy Gannon. By the time I reach Jimmy Gannon's house, Cousin Mamie is having a little chat with Mr. Gannon. You mean to say... I don't mean to say. I'm telling you what your Jimmy did. 
Jimmy don't steal little boy's dollies. Tell your little boy he's got a sweet little imagination. I'll show you a sweet little imagination. Oh, it's threats, is it? It's promises. Jimmy, get over here. Jimmy Gannon appears out of nowhere. Yo, what's up? What did you do with this little boy's dolly? Bobby's dolly? It was my sister's doll, Jimmy. It was my sister's doll. Bobby, what are you talking about? What did you do with the wee dolly, a thick-headed armadon? I didn't do nothing. I don't even know what you're talking about. Jimmy, if you're lying... Why would I lie about something so stupid? It's well known around the neighborhood. Don't mess with me. I don't need to steal little girls' dollies. Jimmy, you know what you did. I don't know, Bobby. I swear to God, I didn't do nothing. You'll go to hell for this. Don't be coming around my house telling my Jimmy he's gonna go to... <sighs> Mr. Gannon tumbles to the sidewalk. Apparently, Cousin Mamie kicked Mr. Gannon in the hiney. Mr. Gannon's lying on the pavement. Uh, he tries to get up slow. Jimmy hauling on his arm. He limps up the front stoop. Uh, Jimmy Gannon gives me a look. The walk back to my house is ridiculous. I look for my rag doll on the sidewalk in everybody's front yards and the gutters. I open garbage cans. He isn't anywhere. Robert, are you sure it was Jimmy Gannon? Then I'm not sure. I see that older boy's face and it isn't Jimmy. It's some other boy stabbing my rag doll. That night. Uncle Brendan. Are you still drunk driving up there? Close your eyes, you ugly thing. Bless your ragdoll heart. Close your eyes till birdies sing. You and I must part. I made you from cloth and fluff. Day is done. Was that enough? Close your eyes, you ugly thing. Bless your ragdoll, bless your ragdoll, bless your ragdoll heart. All night long. Ragdoll commandos pour through my window, march across my floor, scale the side of my bed, each one whispering. It was my sister's doll, Jimmy. It was my sister's doll. Morning. I know what I have to do, even if it means getting punched in the face, which it probably will. I walk to Jimmy Gannon's house. Here's Jimmy sitting on the front stoop like he's waiting for me. But as I get closer, I see his cheeks are wet. I'm going to kill you. Jimmy, what's the matter? My mommy and daddy just left in an ambulance. It's my daddy's hiney. He can't stand up straight. Jimmy reaches into his pocket. Jimmy, where'd you get a switchblade? What? Why wouldn't I have a switchblade? You think I don't know switchblade people? I was just making polite conversation. Jimmy, where'd you get a switchblade? Is polite conversation? You think I'm a thick-headed Amadon? That switchblade flicks open. No, no. Anyways, only an Amadon would be a big enough Amadon to call another Amadon an Amadon. That sentence had the word Amadon in it like five times. Actually, I think it was more like four. That lady who kicked my daddy in the hiney called me a thick-headed Amadon. Jimmy, that's actually why I'm here. I'm here to apologize for three things. And number three is the most important. Okay, number one. Number one, I'm sorry I accused you of stealing. 
I know you didn't take the doll. Thank you, Bobby. I swear to God I didn't. Number two. Number two. Who would have thought somebody as little as Cousin Mamie could kick somebody as big as your daddy in the hiney hard enough that he'd have to go to the hospital? Is that an apology? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. People can't be going around kicking other people in their high knees. Thank you, Bobby. No problem. Yo, Jimmy, I'll say a novena for your daddy. You said there were three things. No, no, just two. You said number three was the most important. Well, if you must know. Number three. It wasn't my sister's doll. It was... Jimmy, do you smell something? I don't smell anything. What's number three? Number three. It wasn't my sister's doll. It was... Jimmy, are you sure you don't smell something? I don't smell anything. I think I smell smoke. I think I smell smoke coming from your backyard. We run around back. Here's the Gannon's family rusty old barbecue. My rag doll lying on the grill. Smoke, flames, Jimmy. What the? I want my daddy back. I want my daddy back. Jimmy. Sometimes, when I'm having a bad day, I think of something my pop once said to me. It's nice to want things. What did you just say? That switchblade glistening in the morning sun. I said, sometimes, when I'm having a bad day... Not that part. I heard that part. The part at the end. It's nice to want things, Jimmy. It's nice to want things. Thank you, Bobby. It is nice to want things, isn't it? He flicks that switchblade shut. Yes, Jimmy. It is nice to want things. We stand there a long time, watching the smoldering remains of G.I. Patrick. Button eyes, painted smile, rag doll heart, smoke curls up, up, up into the morning sky. The angels never hear the likes of me. Are they looking down? Do they even see? I am no Saint Anthony, and I will never be. The angels never hear the likes of me.